Health departments in counties all over Metro Detroit are optimistic this will be a short term setback, but many are now scrambling to rework their plans. Jennifer Ann Wilson is live in Detroit tonight with the challenges this is creating for local vaccination clinics. Uh, good afternoon, Jennifer Ann. Please fill us in. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you brought up some good points already. I'm here in Detroit in front of one of the schools in which uh, Johnson & Johnson was supposed to be given today as part of their neighborhood outreach program. The mayor of Detroit says that the Johnson & Johnson vaccines only make up 2% of the vaccines that the city is giving out. Still, they had to make a very quick and fast adjustment at the last minute, as did many counties in our area as well. And that brings a lot of logistical challenges, but they all rose to the occasion and ensured that not a single appointment was canceled. This was supposed to be a Johnson and Johnson clinic. This morning, the clinic at Oakland University had to change course fast after the CDC and FDA called for a pause in the use of the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. Wayne and Macomb counties also acted quickly to avoid canceling appointments. If you had Johnson & Johnson, you're going to get one of the Moderna or Pfizer. We're not going to stop scheduling those appointments. We used vaccine for appointments that were not scheduled yet here at the clinic. So no one's losing out on getting vaccine at their appointment because of this. Moving forward, as COVID-19 case numbers continue to surge, Mayor Duggan says Detroit has plenty of Pfizer and Moderna, and he wants residents to take advantage. Get down to TCF, get your Pfizer vaccines, uh, and uh, with the, uh, we got more than 400 people in the hospital right now just in the city of Detroit. It's the highest number we've seen in a year. Uh, we need to get vaccinated. But in other areas, could vaccination efforts slow down with just two vaccines instead of three? We'll have to try to get as much of Pfizer and Moderna as we can to make up for that shortcoming. Turns out swapping one vaccine for another isn't as easy as it sounds. The paramedics and the people that are administering it have to understand how to use that product specifically. So there's a training methodology that comes into play. And now instead of just doing the one dose, they're going to have to commit to a longer period of time because they have to follow up three, four weeks later with the other dose, uh, the second dose from those various products. So there's a lot more that comes into it logistically. In Macomb County, Johnson & Johnson shots were being used for homebound seniors. Uh, not only because of the one dose, but because you can't take the other um, products uh, to one location, administer one dose, and then transport it to another location. While some vaccination sites may need to close temporarily, there is hope that the Johnson & Johnson shots will be able to be administered in the very near future. The checks and balances for safety that the federal government has in place on vaccines worked. Once the six cases of the 6.8 million people who received the shot are studied more closely. In the CDC and FDA, uh, they're having a meeting tomorrow that'll take a closer look at these cases to see what the common denominator is among them. I also want to point out the VSAFE uh, website and is a program that the CDC has started. You can register at VSAFE on CDC and they will check up with you several times after you take that vaccine just to see what your side effects are. So they are keeping track of these things. And coming up at six o'clock, we're going to speak with an infectious disease pharmacist and professor who takes us through the trial period and really gives some more perspective on what this pause means for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Reporting live here in Detroit, I'm Jennifer Ann Wilson, 7 Action News. And Jennifer Ann, as Mark Hackle so eloquently pointed out, that once plans and strategies are in place for a specific vaccine, it's going to take some time to rearrange and pivot and maneuver to not having that as an option any longer. Jennifer Ann, thank you. All right, Brian, joining us now is Dr. Jeffrey Barnes, a cardiologist and vascular medicine specialist at the Michigan Medicine Frankel Cardiovascular Center. Dr. Barnes, thank you for being with us this afternoon. Thanks for having me. So do you think this is a good idea to pause this vaccine? I think it's really important that the CDC and the FDA have decided to be as transparent as they can about these cases to let us know and to tell us they're gonna learn more so that we can all be confident in just how safe and important it is to get vaccinated against COVID-19. Now, how concerned do we need to be if we've had this Johnson & Johnson vaccine? Yeah, I would tell people to be reassured. These are very rare events that are occurring and they're occurring in a very narrow window. They tend to happen about four to five days and up to three weeks after receiving the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, but not before then and not after then. So it's a pretty narrow window for a very rare event. 
overall, these are very safe uh, vaccines that I encourage people to get vaccinated as soon as they can. Okay, doctor. And so the blood clots, how significant are they? Can you tell us about how that happens? Yeah, they can be very significant. These are rare blood clots that occur in unusual locations that require pretty immediate treatment. Thankfully, all of us know how to treat these kinds of blood clots. We have the tools necessary to diagnose and treat them once uh, we are made aware. But again, I wanna reassure people, these are extremely rare events and that overwhelming majorities of people will not get these blood clots after getting a COVID vaccine. Very important to say, doctor. Um, what are some signs that we can watch out for? Again, if you fall in that narrow window between four to five days and up to three weeks after the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, and you de develop a severe headache that doesn't go away, maybe with some vision change or significant nausea and vomiting, that might be a sign that you could be one of the few people that has one of these events. Evaluation would be appropriate at that point so we can quickly decide if you have this clot and treat you appropriately. All right, so give your own doctor a call or should you go back to where you got the shot or just all of the above if you feel like you have, yeah. Yeah, I would say either give your doctor a call or if it's really severe, you could always go into the emergency room. But again, these are gonna be just during that narrow window and only for people who got the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, not the Pfizer or Moderna vaccines, which are the vast majority of vaccines being given in Michigan. Dr. Barnes, thank you for taking some time to get us up to speed this afternoon. Thank you.